good evening all uh, welcome to this discussion by citizen matters we are back with our month's event my name is shobhna radhakrishnan i'm the senior reporter with citizen matters and we are a media organization reporting on critical urban issues ideas and solutions for cities our topic for today is how to become a zero waste household so a citizen clinic is a platform for people to seek information guidance on a specific topic from respected domain experts this time residents of chennai sent us questions related to solid waste management so segregation disposal of different types of waste reducing plastic and minimizing waste generation in their households how to be mindful how to mindfully dispose of uh, you know how to mindfully dispose of plastic and other packaging how to get started on composting whom to reach out to for disposing of e waste these are some of the questions our panelists will be answering today so we have i would like to extend my warm welcome to the panelists we have mr natarajan he is a former it professional who lived abroad for many years when he returned to chennai he was struck by the alarming garbage problems in the city he founded namma ooru foundation a non profit organization engaged in solid waste management rain water harvesting increasing green cover in the city so he also founded puvi earth care solution a social enterprise that focuses on providing sustainable environmental solutions we have janani on the panel uh, janani venkatesh an environmental and solid waste management enthusiast working with communities institutions organizations and other corporations such as municipalities in implementing source segregation of waste on a purely volunteering basis uh, she started the association uh, residents for kasturba nagar association whose primary focus is on solid waste management uh next on the panel we have madhuvanti rajkumar she is a researcher at uh, citizen consumer and civic action group cag she is also a lawyer and an activist in the field of women and child rights she has previously worked as a policy researcher on a project with iitm uh, for create for the creation of a strategic framework for the management of hazardous waste particularly in the pharmaceutical and uh, e waste industry so i think we'll dive deep into the questions directly so we have the first question from uh, mathuri ramasamy so this question basically touches upon the uh, mental barrier that we have so they say that we are a family of five my family members are clear about segregating organic waste pure plastic waste cardboard etc the, the organic waste my uh, i mean we're very lazy and add the semi organic also into the organic bucket sometimes and expect the domestic help or the conservancy worker to segregate we also feel why we should do additional work when we give lump sum maintenance so i think this question deals with the mental barrier that all of us have so i would like uh, mr natarajan and janani to take a call on this <clears throat> yeah see uh It's actually a very serious uh, problem that uh, we are talking. First of all, uh, uh, kudos to Citizen Matters for coming up with this topic and uh, taking it to the wider audience. Um, so, when the serious problem is put in front of us, uh, there is no question of being lazy or uh, be paying maintenance or those things. Right? We are in crisis actually. So, no matter what, we need to get it done. so i always say that always do the right thing and not the easy thing so uh, once you it leaves the mixed trash whatever semi mixed or little bit mixed or uh, semi solid and uh, liquid mixed whatever it is once it leaves you then it will be a challenging task for the uh, sanitary workers to again uh, put their hand in it and uh, uh, you know uh, segregate it further so uh, no matter what figure out a way uh, to uh, make sure uh, the 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 waste leaves your home or i would call it uh, unutilized materials leaves your home in a, a properly segregated way that is the only solution and that is the right solution uh, no matter whether you pay for the maintenance or don't pay for the maintenance doesn't matter get it done that's all because we don't have a choice Uh, yeah uh, i completely agree with uh, mr natarajan's view on you know no matter what you have to segregate uh, there are challenges uh, like 
the one who had asked the question when it when you're living in an apartment that has uh, say more than 10 units or even five units you would be segregating and the rest of them will not segregate so from the question what i understand was their, their family is segregating but at apartment level how how will she uh, you know try to implement it i hope she is on the call uh, is she So basically what, uh, uh, yeah, uh, having, uh, working in a community, not work, we're still working and ongoing thing in Kasturba Nagar is the same challenges. Uh, there might be three residents who would uh, segregate and the rest of them would put their uh, ways together. So finding the right person in, in the apartment, if she's living in the same apartment, she could reach out to other uh, people and uh, check their interest level and create the awareness and uh, like Natarajan said, why we need to segregate. If we are not segregating, where does it go? And if, if we segregate, where does it go? So that uh, that talk, that init initiation from her uh, might change the mentality of the others. Uh, if she can try doing that. I hope that helps her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I, yeah. So the next question is from Priya. Uh, she says that my husband and daughter order a lot of food from delivery apps and packaging is a mix of plastic paper and other materials. How do I go about segregating them and disposing them safely? Again, I think uh, this question is for Janani. You know, if you'd like to take this question. So you can start first. <laughs> we, we mostly agree on the... You're, you're muted. Please go ahead. Yes, this again, this is another challenge. Uh, uh, though we say three way segregation and we say put all your organic waste, kitchen waste into the green bin. Uh, we see a lot of these swiggy and zomato boxes uh, with chutney, sambar, biryani, and whatever that they order in the, uh, in the green bin. And when we go and talk to them, they say, you asked us to put the food waste. So let me put the food waste with the plastics. So that's not what one is supposed to do. I uh, I agree that, you know, you cannot completely avoid ordering in food. Uh, uh, you know, that uh, uh, the first thing that I would suggest is try to go and uh, carry your own uh, boxes and pick it up from the restaurants near you. But yes, there are situations where you need to order in. Um, what is the best way to dispose of your uh, packaged material is let it be clean and dry. Whatever uh, material that goes into the blue bin, which we call the recyclable dry waste, it is not going to recycle, be recycled tomorrow or the day after or even the next year. It is going to take a couple of years for it to reach the recycler's place and be processed. So that is the reason we suggest it to be clean and dry. And if it is not clean and dry, it is going to contaminate the rest of the contents in the bin or when it reaches the recycler. So um, please dispose of whatever contents in the uh, you know packaged material into the green bin, the solid part of it. Quickly give a rinse, dry it and put it in the blue bin. I'm telling you, it is not, not at all difficult at all. It is the most easiest thing. It wouldn't take more than a few seconds. Just show it under the tap, clean it dry it and put it in the blue bin or the cover or the sack, whatever you're using to uh, dispose of your dry waste. Yeah, try to avoid in the first place, refuse, reduce, avoid it. But in case of emergency or in some situations, please try to follow this. So would as you like to add? Yeah, as a follow yeah, up to that, we have another question like, uh... Well, uh, this question is from Aparna. She asks, my main concern is what to line our dustbins with. Most of the dustbin covers are waste utensils. So, what are the all? You don't need a, yeah, uh, again, you, you don't need a bin liner uh, except for your red reject waste, which will have uh, your human fluids and other things, uh, hazardous waste. Uh, you would not need any liners for your green bin or blue bin. Green bin with uh, which has your organic waste, it doesn't have to have any bin liner, so you can avoid. Because what we try to tell the residents is, in the name of segregation, you keep adding more plastic covers. Every day you try to dispose of your green waste in a plastic cover, uh, it does not make sense, right? Uh, you're doing good and at the same time, you know, adding more plastics. One reason. Second reason, once you contaminate 
if you use a plastic liner for your green bin where do you put it say you're sending the green contents through your domestic help or on your own where do you put your uh, contaminated uh, plastic or do you put it in the green or do you put it in the uh, blue it is going to contaminate the rest of the blue content. So it's a, it's the same question that we ask again and again. Avoid bin liners. There are no uh, alternatives uh, that we get in the market that says compostable, I am not plastics. Those are not uh, no good replacement. So you do not need a bin liner for your organic waste. Directly empty it into the BOV operator's vehicle if you are following that system or if you have a bin at apartment level, empty it into the green bin straight and you know, you can just quickly wash. It is your waste. It is not somebody's waste. And you're disposing it off every day. So it should not smell that bad. So, yes, that would be my take on uh, bin liners. I am sure Natarajan sir will. I learned from Natarajan. So <laughs> we are going to be on the same page on most of the things. But please add, um, uh, you know, any yeah, yeah. points yeah. that I've missed, <clears throat> sir. Yeah, you put it nicely. So, see, one thing I want to say is, uh, as I said in the you know the initial round, the uh, we are in a crisis, so uh, there is no leeway for uh, you know mixing or uh, I don't have time to uh, do recycling or I don't have to time to segregate all that thing. We don't have room at all, uh, and it's a behavioral change, and uh, you need to uh, if at all if you're really concerned. Again, we are in a you know 1.4 billion population uh, all over the country, and uh, about uh, uh, seven crore and uh, 40 lakh people in Tamil Nadu. So um, it's if you are really willing to make a change, then uh, you need to convince yourself. You need to uh, change your behavior, and it needs a lot of effort. It's not gonna because uh, anything you have to change from the way you are doing. Uh, all these last 10 years, uh, then it's going to be a difficult task. So think it as a behavioral change and uh, put some effort on it and uh, influence your family members. If you could do that, then all these bin liners, all these are like, you know, 10-year-old uh, questions actually. So uh, those things are gone. Now, now time to, you know, get in. There is enough information available. A lot of people there, you can ask a question, post a question, a lot of Facebook group available, social media handles available. Just follow, get the information and get it on. That's it. So, we have uh, we had a lot of questions on this uh, one-time plastic that comes in grocery package. So, from Nandini, Chitra, Sri Devi, Sri Vidya, and Janani. So, the question was what to do with the grocery, such as, you know, the packaging waste that comes with things like uh, salt, pulses, biscuits, this plastic uh, packaging. So, Natarajan, so do you like it? Yeah. See, uh, that is something which is a very, very serious uh, problem, actually. Because everywhere, whether you like it or not, I am a consumer. I just go to, all I need is a, a biscuit. That's all. I don't uh, tell the, uh, you know, uh, seller or manufacturer that they will, they should put it in a plastic packet. They are putting it in a plastic packaging to increase the uh, shelf life. Right. And it is not their mistake. I'm not asking for a, uh, uh, you know, uh, oil in a five rupee sachet, or I'm not asking for a one rupee sachet. It is that is how the product is available, right? So again, you have to, uh, if you are environmentally conscious and want to take a serious uh, role in uh, fighting climate change and pollution, then uh, you should adopt uh, sustainable options of taking your own containers and uh, go buy it from the uh, shops. If at all, you need to buy uh, all these uh, packets, then then the options are very limited uh, because again, in recycling, uh, it is not like, you know, 100% is happening, right? So uh, there are some studies that, that says recycling is a myth. Less than 20% of what we throw is actually what recycle, recycle. So uh, the single-use plastics, strictly have to go away. No, no, that's it. No carry bags, no, uh, you know, uh, the, even if you buy like, you know, uh, 50 grams of uh, uh, ilachi or uh, 50 grams of uh, methi seeds, again, it's coming in a plastic packet, right? So consumer cannot do anything on this. Uh, so they have to, all they can do is from their side, uh, 
uh, actually this is the multi pronged approach here to go for government side they have to do something and manufacturer side they have to do something and people like citizen matters uh, namo uru foundation likes of janani we all have to come together and uh, uh, sensitize people and give a solution for this but right now to collect all these plastics and uh, save it do not uh, throw it with other waste and uh, right now the only option available is to send it to the cement factory so that they can use it as a fuel for the single use plastic packets which of uh, mm -hmm. of so again the problem is uh, volume so if you give them 1 kg nobody will take it if you give it in like at least a ton then they will say and bail it and give it so that's where the role of corporation comes in they have the machinery they have the manpower they have the money power so they can uh, set up facilities to uh, bail it and then send it for uh, send it to the cement factory but again people also have a role of throwing differently and giving it separately like jenny said clean and dry sir i have a question there um unfortunately there is no value the kailangadai or the kabadi walas locally are not taking the uh, low value plastics or these provision covers that we are talking about so when we segregate and give uh, say there is door to door across chennai uh, we are giving it to them in a segregated dry manner uh, what i find is they try to dispose of the high value plastics locally before it reaches mrf and uh, the bov operators take the money which is fine uh, i don't have a problem there but the the mlps and the low value plastics they themselves agree that they are dumping it right now in the uh, bins uh, so when you say that it is the role of the corporation or the contractor in play uh, why are not they educated or they are not aware that there is there is uh, there is a market or a ma market is created Uh, for it to be disposed the right way, uh, as far as I know, and I'm sure you will also have observed that MRFs are not collecting these MLPs at all. So, uh, so who who would uh, be able to give them this uh, uh, understanding that we are segregating and giving? Do take it to the MRF, keep it aside, and you know find a vendor to take the uh, low value plastics also. Uh, I, I yeah, that is a question I have. <laughs> yeah. see again uh, as i said uh, this infrastructure for solid waste management it has to be robust so right now it is not uh, though there are you know mrf rrc uh, mrf stand hello muting it but we can't let's not take that risk yeah uh, so mrf stands for material recovery facility and rrc stands for uh, uh, resource recovery center all that uh they are all uh, not efficiently functioning at this point and uh, due to various reasons and uh, again the the monetary value around it is also very limited uh, how much the cement factory is going to give this uh, for this uh, single use plastic maybe for a ton or a two they may give some 3000 or 4000 rupees it's not very interesting so that is why these kind of things has to be subsidized uh anyway taxpayers money is being spent uh, unless and until it is uh, subsidized that's why it is on the government predominantly uh and uh, the uh, solution providers because again they need to sustain as a business whether it is a recycler or a aggregators uh if even if you take them rack pickers or the aggregators they don't uh, select those kind of uh, single use plastic they just ignore them and pick only the high value as you said so uh the corporation uh, has to uh, play a more uh, major role in this uh, uh, and uh, and uh, strengthen and give us a more robust uh, mrf and R R R rrc uh, and uh, on the other hand uh, as you said there are different segment of uh, residential uh, colonies right if it is a 100 unit uh, apartment uh, community then there is there will be some kind of control where you can uh, you know uh, save uh, over the period maybe two months three months you can save and collect like a ton and then give it whereas uh, if it is a five apartment 20 apartment 10 apartment the dry uh, low value place will be very limited so uh, unless and until uh, the government comes up with a subsidized solution for this uh, there is no solution i see thank you Yes, Madhuvan, do you have a question? Madhuvan, yeah. 
No, I, I don't have a question. I just wanted to add on to what you said. So I would actually go a step further and say that the onus should be on the corporations and the conglomerates in order to start with product redesign. Uh, to phase out single-use plastics or multi-layered plastics, what we call is problematic or avoidable or short-lived plastics. Because as long as it's continuing to be produced and like put in the market, consumers are going to continue consuming it and throwing it away. So here, government at this point is, uh, uh, is, 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 is it's a bit doubtful because if we want real efforts, I feel it should start from product redesign where from the top you face it out. Uh, so I feel the larger responsibility should be on the corporations for this. Um, actually, uh, I, I, you know, a uh, little bit differ from you because end of the day, government is the one giving license. They are the one allowing the company to produce the product. So they should, they have a pollution control board. They should say this is the right uh, wrapper this is the eco-friendly wrapper. This is what should be used. And uh, if you if they don't follow, cancel their license. That's all. Very simple. You have all the control. Yeah, I hundred percent agree that the government has authority. But where yeah. government's intervention should be, that is where I differ. I feel, as you said, government when the license could occur stage, if they intervene, it is great. But not uh, intervening at the downstream waste management level uh, is is the point. But I completely agree with the. The, uh, the law, as per the law, that's why EPR came in picture, you know, extend the producer responsibility, the manufacturers need to collect uh, the, you know, uh, the the wrappers or anything, whatever the product they send. But <clears throat> in net net, uh, the owners should be on the government and the, the next should come to the manufacturers, not the people. People, they are consumers. What are, that's how they are getting. Uh, at the max, what you can expect from us, uh, give them, give it separately. That's all you can expect. So uh, the onus is on the uh, government. They have the single-use plastic ban and they have to enforce it. That enforcement is you know, uh, not very effective. And yeah, yeah. Uh, fine, fine and uh, cancel license of the people who are not uh, following the rule. That uh, as simple as that. And they have all the authority, manpower, mission power, everything at their disposal. So here mm -hmm. I would, uh, Shobna, if there's just a minute, uh, yeah. uh, I would just like to add something which is relevant here because we have sort of moved into a conversation on policy. So for those who are not aware, there is uh, an international law, a binding legal instrument which is being negotiated by the UN to regulate to end plastic pollution. It's uh, called as the Global Plastics Treaty. Uh, so CAG has been uh, representing uh, consumer voices at these negotiations. So uh, one of the provisions in this treaty, uh, the draft text is that facing out or prohibiting um, problematic, avoidable, single-use and short-lived plastics. So this is something that we are, uh, you know, related to what we are talking right now. And uh, Natarajan sir mentioned this thing about people should not be blamed, right? So during the negotiations, I just wanted to mention that Every single person, meaning the industry, fossil fuel industry or plastic industry or um, many of the member delegations, they say they view plastic pollution as a litter issue, that it's only a waste management issue. And they consider, they agree to the extent of polluter pays should be there as a principle in environmental law, but polluters are consumers because consumers are littering. So that narrative has to it has to be completely changed and we can change that by you know providing like citizen matters is providing a platform for citizens to be more aware and informed so i think this is a great thing that you are doing thank you for that i have the next question for you again these two questions of from monica and sapna uh how to build the mindset to minimize buying to reduce waste at home? And as a follow up to that, uh, does Chennai have zero packing or refill places or mobile stations? These are the two questions they have for you. Okay. Um, so before before going into the question, I just want to uh, speak for like 30 seconds on what is zero waste. So zero waste is is actually a way of life. It's a lifestyle. Zero waste is not an absolute concept and nobody can transition to that uh, lifestyle overnight, right? So so what 
what is zero waste is basically in that way of life you do not dispose or discard anything as waste or trash or garbage you try to recover as much value as you can from everything that after the intended use is over you try to recover as much value as you can and you aim to do not to not dispose anything as waste as close to zero as possible so that is uh, the idea behind zero waste now there are various levels of um, of switching to zero waste and i would say that like whatever information that citizens are getting from today it is not completely necessary that they have to follow everything first they can test the waters understand the different models see what suits them better and start somewhere and then keep moving up as close to zero as uh, as comfortable they are so this is just a small um, introduction i just wanted to give uh, on zero waste so uh, your question uh, the monica's question regarding being uh, changing the mindset i would say that uh, we need to be mindful about our consumption because once you buy a product and your intended consumption is over that automatically becomes waste because you do, you no longer need it so i would say that your mindset your the change in mindset has to come from the time you're buying the product when you're making purchasing decisions you need to remember the three r's right so it's refuse reduce and reuse so you need to you need to ask yourself if you need it or if you want it adavadhu ungalku theva iruka illa ungalku virupa padradhunala ungalku adu neenga adu vaangringala abindra that need and want nadula you have to ask yourself that question and um, maybe another tip to reduce waste is to is to think about the life span of the product that you're buying you know like uh, when you're buying a product you have long life you need to use panna poringa and also the amount of resources that have gone into making that product and after you use it where will that product end up so, like a small example is like you know you get these pet bottle what like 500 ml water bottles right so if you like adu evlo naram like that 500 ml it will get over in like a few seconds if you drink it and uh, open it and drink it but if you if you think about it like uh, studies show that it takes three times the amount of water that is inside adoda equivalent mari it takes three times to make that pet bottle and about quarter of the bottle that amount of oil is required to make that pet bottle because you know plastics are made primarily from fossil fuels from oil and uh, so so you have to think like if you think about the electricity the fuel it takes to transport and not to mention the hundreds of years that putty pet bottle will be in the environment not degrading at all so or few seconds nama thanni kudikkaradhukaga we have to spend so many resources and like cause so much damage apindra or chinna thought nam if we question ourselves i feel like that would be a great step to start uh, being mindful of our consumption yeah so we had a caller question to that so uh, does chennai have zero packaging refill places or mobile stations yeah so uh, ipo recent a launch panna or initiative is uh, refillables appdin solittu so which is uh, it is a zero waste initiative to eliminate single use plastic and plastic bottles for um, home care products so uh, what you can do is they have mobile refilling stations and they have one stationary a uh, thing in uh, waste 360 i think yeah. so you can take your existing plastic bottles or you, they will give you glass bottles which you have to reuse later so you can go refill detergent fabric softener multi purpose cleaner toilet cleaners and things like that and um, you can get it in 500 ml or 1 liter if i'm not wrong so this is for liquids for re this the refillables thing and uh, for uh, zero waste packaging so cag has uh, on our website you can find something called the zero waste store locator where we put together like a directory or a or a repository of stores which uses um, which use limited plastic packaging or some stores you are completely plastic free and some stores also offer alternatives to single use plastic so that could be a good resource the zero waste store locator thank you so we have next question from saranya and this is for jenny we get a lot of food waste in glass bottles what do we do with the ones we don't need 
ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮೀ ಟು ರೀಸೈಕ್ಲ್ uh yes glass bottles is another challenge uh, uh, just like uh, single use plastics um we have identified from our own uh, resource and our own uh, uh, you know ground work we have found out a few uh, not recyclers aggregators in chennai uh, who take all kinds of bottles uh, there is value for alcohol uh, some alcohol bottles and there are there is i think as far as my understanding goes uh, most of the kabadi wala skylangades do not take the uh, other bottles say for example pickles or jam that we frequently buy and uh, that doesn't seem to have or people do not uh, accept those bottles in the stream of collection but we what we have identified one or two in chennai one is uh, uh, one is in the kobilambakam area but the challenge again is how do you reach your bottles how do you uh, you know give it to them is uh, is a question which i would like some uh, madhuvanthi or natarajan to help me uh, you collect bottles it has to be a quantity that can be uh, you know given it to the right person how do you collect so much quantity and give it to them and again from my understanding talking to the bov operators they also say that they do not take it to the mrf it's only the alcohol bottles that they are uh, able to make value from the uh, local kabadi walas that they sell it so just like the other plastic bottles are also not reaching the mrf which is one place where we think our segregated waste would go uh, but like i said there are uh, aggregators who take uh, uh, glass bottles we can give the contacts uh, in this chat or maybe later one is uh, in the kovilambakam area and the other is uh, uh, in red hills uh, is prico is another one which collects uh, all kinds of uh, bottles uh, we'll uh, i'm sure sharanya will be trying to reuse as much as possible but there will be a lot that you want to dispose it of and uh, we are all figuring it out i think wasted 360 also uh, uh, collects uh, bottles if i'm not wrong but we will share the contacts of the person that we have identified in chennai who are ready to take bottles but how we reach uh, you know collect so much and uh, give it to them uh, there is also carbon footprint of taking it all the way to kovilambakam and giving it to them uh, what do you think natarajan how do we balance this uh, carbon footprint to compensate for the amount of uh, thing that we collect and reach it to the right aggregator that's a that's again a tricky question see yeah. uh, we need to there is no one solution that fits all so first of all we need to segment the uh, uh, waste source for example uh, gated communities where there are you know 100 plus gated communities first we need to uh, like the bulk waste generators we need to you know focus on them first because right uh, the volume that's where we get that's where we will have the control and these small units on the street they are throwing uh, and uh, again uh, the scrap shops uh, because they are not picking it up or they are not uh, encouraging or they are not interested because there is no monetary value but there is monetary value and uh, these uh, like the likes of preco or waste 360 uh, or uh, you know recycle mart uh, everybody takes those uh, bottles mm -hmm. but uh, general public cannot reach them so these uh, <clears throat> scrap shops are the one available in every street so uh, they should be uh, trained and they should be uh, connected with the these companies so that uh, uh, that company should be ready to pay to that uh, you know spreco should be should be ready to pay to the uh, scrap shop you know you you collect it i will you know pay and pick it up so if that uh, gap is addressed then uh, we have a solution again uh see whatever is happening as initiatives it's happening in small small pockets so there should be you know state wide or at least uh, uh, city wide implementation should be there so that is why i say again and again uh, the uh, government need to oh, no. and uh, take a there should be a solid political will without that whatever we are doing all the good work all small small ngos and individuals or uh, swm enthusiasts we all doing it's all you know tamil or parmal solom kadal la perungai kacha mari that's the you know effect but nammalum summa irukka mudiyadhu edho or edho one panni avanum that is why uh, we are doing what we are doing but uh, 
but in it has to be a comprehensive solution uh, in order to uh, address this problem especially the i wouldn't even call a problem anymore address this crisis so every year actually pathina uh, 1 crore 40 lakh ton of uh, plastic is being dumped in the ocean so uh, it's 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 unimaginable so uh, after seeing all these serious uh, numbers uh, of the the likes of CAG or Namavur uh, Foundation, all probably we all have to uh, come together and uh, go uh, form pressure groups and uh, start doing lobbying uh, to uh, have a solid uh, implementation of all these uh, uh, on the ground solutions that we found. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, there's another interesting question from Roshni, and this question I'd like to ask you. Mm -hmm. so she says, I have a baby and I use diapers for her. I use separate bins for food and paper waste. I don't want to make another one just for the diaper waste. Uh, why can I add this to as well as work cloth diapers? Mm -hmm. Sorry, this is for me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, Diapers, right? So diapers are just like sanitary pads in the segregation uh, pyramid. It's considered to be sanitary or domestic hazardous waste. And ideally, uh, they should also be uh, wrapped in paper and marked with a red dot and a circle, just like we, uh, we should ideally do for sanitary pads. So this is why we do this, is uh, this campaign, the whole red dot campaign, it was started in Pune. So why we do this is because so that the conservancy workers and the informal uh, waste workers who use their hands to segregate the waste, our waste, do not contract any health issues because of uh, dealing with, you know, biomedical bodily fluids and things like that. Um, so so this is where you, you would normally put the diapers, but... I would suggest from a point of view of uh, waste minimization, I would suggest that there are alternatives. Uh, like when any time any talk about alternatives come, I think we should just go back to our old times, like do not forget our roots. Um, so there are a lot of cloth diapers, cloth reusable diapers. Um, which I would suggest that we use. This is not just from a waste minimization point of view, but also from a yeah. health perspective because uh, disposable diapers are plastic made like from plastics and uh, there are a lot of chemicals and additives used in it which could potentially cause rashes for the baby and things like that and there are many washable and reusable cloth diapers available for babies but one thing which we need to be careful is in reading the fine print and not falling uh, prey to greenwashing activities. For instance, like it's we have to be very careful in checking the say packaging or the contents in it, like see if there are synthetic materials like PLA or PU or uh, you know, and things like that. Uh, so my suggestion would be to uh, switch to non uh, to reusable uh, cloth diapers and uh, once you segregate, I think uh, I could also like uh, call on Janani for this, but I, I know that in some areas, Urbazer is collecting sanitary waste and diaper waste uh, like separately from other streams of waste. And, uh, but, uh, but in like, I spoke to a, a couple of colleagues in this field, in the development sector also. And, uh, and they, in their areas, including in my area, they do not collect it sub separately. Uh, Janani, what about uh, Unglod? Uh, when it was uh, introduced, uh, maybe three, four months back, for a few days, they were collecting it separately and taking it to a play, uh, collecting it all together. And then they say they would be sending it to Gumudi Pundi for incineration. But I don't see that happening continued happening till now i think it is uh it's not happening anymore so it, it was just for a few days to show yeah okay did did i answer the question shobna or i'm sorry i wasn't able to hear it properly. yeah 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 you did oh, Natarajan, sir, did you have something to add to that um okay. yeah i think it's happening uh on bits and pieces especially on the boe so there is a sticker uh 
please uh, give the sanitary pads and the diapers separately and we will collect it. Uh, sanitary napkin gal, matrum, diaper gal, uh, perapadum, taniyal kudukavum. There is a sticker in the POVs. So, again, uh, at the end of it, whether the, the product is the end of it, we don't know. That's still a question mark. Okay. Uh, so, the next so like uh, Madhuvanti said, uh, go for the alternatives. Okay. So, this the recycling is a myth. Don't even think. Focus on going to sustainable living. That's the way. Do the right thing. So, uh, the next question is on the e-waste. How do we dispose of uh, e-waste properly? Things like these batteries, chargers, and wires. This question is again from Madhuvanti. This is from Sweta Kanan and Rajagopal. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so just to start with the like few bits and pieces of information. If for those who do not know what e-waste is, it is it is any electronic or electrical product which is fulfilled its intended use and requires to be disposed of. It can be wires, bulbs, tube lights, your earphones, phones, anything. So one, India is the third largest generator of e-waste in the world after China and the US. We have e-waste management rules and our EPR framework, uh, Extended Producer Responsibility Framework, covers e-waste too. EPR means the producers of a product are responsible to collect back the waste and manage it in an environmentally sound manner. However, the implementation has been so far minimal to non-existent. Now, coming to the practical part of it. So right now, uh, again, the same thing which I said for uh, sanitary. In some areas, e-waste is being collected uh, once in two months or some uh, in um, in, like I've heard from in Poru, they're collecting it, but in many other areas that they are not uh, uh, receiving e-waste. But what GCC has said is that you can deposit in any of the zone offices and each zone will have two domestic hazardous uh, waste collection centers um, in every zone. So it is, it is not ideal because people have to go like first of all, they will not have too much e-waste being generated ask, every ask day. Question. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so yeah, there, there will not be too much e-waste generated every day. So you you have to wait until there is a bulk amount to go and deposit. And and first mm -hmm. of all, Nama Nama Urla basic source segregation We need to incentivize and motivate people to do that. In the Madri asking them to go, you you take your stuff, you go till there and you deposit and come. That is not very practical according to me. Um, you ask. I think citizen matters group uh, account is not muted. Yeah. Um so yeah, so so uh, again, I spoke to people in uh, uh, in the development sector, and many of them are also finding it difficult to responsibly dispose e-waste. So I can only imagine the plight of citizens. So so I feel that we need to demand GCC and uh, Urbaser and the other companies doing door-to-door -door collection of everyday waste to allocate at least one day, once a month, to collect e-waste and also other miscellaneous waste like old furnitures or tablet strips and not just have a, a mechanism in place but also publicize the mechanism and advertise it to people let people be aware of that this is happening um, yeah that is my response uh, so as a follow-up to that again we have a question on uh, hazardous medical wastes how to responsibly dispose of hazardous medical waste like syringes expired medicines or their pickup facilities for that? I'm getting asked all the questions which don't really have a oh, good no, answer. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. uh, so yeah, we, you know, right now, we do not have enough information or a separate collection stream for collecting biomedical waste from households. Um, so biomedical waste, uh, as uh, um, I don't know who mentioned it before, but it's only from these hospitals and clinics and uh, camps. So these are what are covered under the biomedical waste management rules. So uh, we do need, uh, maybe we can try checking with um, 
with GCC or with hospitals and uh, pharmacies, but it's it's highly unlikely that they will take it. Um, so so again, there is not really a, a a mechanism in place which is accessible to citizens for uh, this particular uh, for collection of biomedical waste. And and without a mechanism in place, I feel citizens should not be solely and unfairly blamed for mismanagement of uh, you know this particular biomedical waste. Yeah, so, for now, the only option left is it has to go with the sanitary waste. At least they should be you know, having the responsibility of putting in the sanitary waste. And that's very minimal comparatively at the household level. And again, if it is a gated community, then that solution can be provided. The commercial players can be requested to uh, come and pick it up. So uh, if it is once and twos, then it is difficult. If it is in good volume from gated communities have like you no know, 200 plus uh, communities, then uh, there is a possibility. Uh, I would uh, just like to add something that quickly, uh, we try doing this uh, collection of uh, sanitary waste, medical, uh, medical waste way back in 2018 or 19, if I'm not wrong, with uh, Kupai Matters, uh, with Satya Rupa. She wanted to pilot it in Kasturba Nagar. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the uh, company that collects from most of the, um, you know, hospitals and uh, clinics and other places, GNI, uh, they will they charge for the, you know, uh, for visiting and collecting from uh, different households. So the question of who will bear the charges, even if it is, even if they are collecting door to door and there is lump sum amount for them, uh, uh, you know, to uh, take it back for incineration or whatever is done with the medical waste. But the question of who will bear the charges arose and we had to drop it off at that point. So like uh, Madhuvanti and Natarajan said, right now at, uh, uh, from individual households, it just has to go with the red, uh, inside the uh, red bin. Right. So, uh, uh... This is an in-house question from our team uh, for Mr. Natarajan. So what do we do with coconut shells, uh, bulky items like furniture, broken glass, tube lights, toned clothes, uh, and in the ways, everything. So Janani and Mr. Natarajan can hopefully. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, these are, all these products, there are takers. And uh, there are organizations like Recycle Marts, Preco. Uh, they're all taking all these uh, furnitures and uh, mattresses, etc. Um only thing is this uh, coconut shell, again, uh, if there is a volume, there is a solution. Uh, directly, the uh, uncared community can be benefited from that. If not, if the volume is uh, less, you, they may not get much money. And uh, these uh, recycling companies, they are uh, you know taking it. And uh, the only solution is right now, uh, you can call them and uh, you know uh, let them know that you have this and they will uh, pick it up. Maybe for a few days you have to keep it because the 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 people need to keep in mind that anything uh, you know come and pick up it's a service right it involves uh, effort it involves money so if and only if it is commercially viable the company will be able to come and pick it up so you say that I have this mattress I call this company they didn't come they they cannot come they may their factory is maybe in uh, you know Gumudi Pundi and they cannot come from Gumudi Pundi to pick up your one mattress right. So uh, that's why uh, you need to have the patience uh, to dispose it of responsibly uh, in, for the individual houses and uh, small apartments. For gated communities, they will have some space and uh, they can store it. And uh, these recyclers are available to you know, uh, pick it up. You can you know, uh, reach out to us or uh, them directly. Yeah, and to add to that, uh, very recently, Urbeza had been sharing a toll-free number to dispose of uh, bulk wastes like furnitures and mattresses and all this uh, in their websites and in WhatsApp groups. Maybe I can share that also in the chat or uh, mail it to you, which you can share with the audience. Yeah. Uh, and like uh, Natarajan said, there are uh, uh, aggregators who collect from the door, but uh, the, the quantity has to be uh, huge. To, to make up the cost of uh, the vehicle and you know the transportation and everything uh, but yes they do come and pick it up uh, from your doorstep uh, recycle mart and a few other recyclers if, if again the departments want share the details of those as well 
So uh, there's another question on uh, composting. What are the options for composting at home and at apartment level? Um, Jenny or yeah, that should go to Natarajan. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yes, uh, there is a you know uh, that's a common question everywhere we get, and uh, sixty percent of what we throw is organic compostable. So if we take care of at least the wet waste management, more than half of our problem will be solved. So uh, there is a foolproof method available. I think the product was introduced some seven eight years ago. A home composting kit that we give. Um, or we also teach them there is a video with the DIY. Uh, if you want, you can also make one, a 250 liter drum, you make a hole and then uh, use the bio clean brick that we sell. Uh, you can use that and do the home composting. It's a foolproof method. You cannot go wrong with that. We do hand holding also once you buy the product from us. That is one option. At the community level also, we have uh, solutions. But the only thing is, the people need to understand is composting is an exacting science. Composting is different from biodegradation. Composting cannot you know, be done like that because it's a natural process. And um, uh, so they need to understand this and uh, work with us accordingly. No, no, I want uh, the compost to be done. I don't have space. Uh, I will give it out. Uh, you manage somewhere. That, that will not work if you're a gated community or a bulk waste generator, you need to have a uh, you know, composting solution in-house. Most of the gated communities are uh, you know, uh, not obliging this, not you know, uh, taking care of, you know, not uh, you know, holding their responsibility. They are uh, finding way to throw it out or they are finding way to set it out somewhere. They pay somewhere between 15,000 rupees a month to 50,500 a month to send it out where there are private players available, they come and pick up uh, your uh, mixer waste or the wet waste alone. And God knows whether it is getting composted or whether it is being sent to biogas. So uh, my request or appeal to the individual uh, home composters, please uh, take up this home composting kit or there is Kamba available if you don't want to use plastic. Uh, and But use this bioclean for some time. And whatever um, you know the solution you pick up, Please understand that it's an exacting science and you need to follow the process. If you don't follow the process, you think you know everything, actually you don't know. So uh, just follow the uh, you know, process. And uh, the apartment level, again, we have solutions, different solutions available. Uh, if it is aesthetic, then there, is, uh, there are aesthetic solutions available. If you want something simple, again, simple solutions are available, uh, which you can uh, keep it. Uh, you can reach out to us. And uh, those who don't have space uh, but generate more, that's when this micro composting center will come in viable. Right now, I'm sitting in a micro composting center and talking to you all. So, where uh, uh, you can uh, come and visit, and then uh, uh, you can come up with a model to uh, come and drop off your uh, uh, organic waste at the my MCC where it can be composted. All right. So, uh... This is the final question we have. Uh, this question is from uh, Raghu Kumar. So he says that we, and all of us should have also noticed this, we see a lot of conservancy workers mixing the waste in the bins. Though we segregate and give, they'll mix it. And they don't have sufficient facilities like the EV vehicles or not. Like they don't have sufficient facilities or number of vehicles or repaired vehicles. So they end up mixing it. So when that is the case, what is the point in you know zero waste management within the house that is a question that most of the people who try to segregate see the scene and then they stop doing it right so i open this question for all the panelists Jenny, you want to take that yes uh, sure sir um so yes uh, considering my work in kasturbanagar uh, uh, i would like to take that as an example um, I would not agree uh, because in areas where there is segregation, uh, the BOV operators try to keep the organic waste separately. Uh, you know, they have a system, they have some eight bins, two are dedicated for organic waste, wet waste, and the uh, rest for, uh, you know, dry waste plastics. And as it gets filled, they go to the Pakatler uh, Kailangada uh, and sell off the plastics and cardboards and all. And then there's a there's one bin for uh, the uh, uh, hazardous domestic hazardous waste which is the red bin 
So that is the system that has been followed in Kasturba Nagar and a few other areas where I've heard segregation is happening. I'm sure uh, uh, Urbezer from their side has also the responsibility to you know, show some number, at least to show that number they would uh, want to keep the segregated waste separately, take the organic waste to the uh, MCC that is nearest to the uh, place of collection and the rest to the MRF for uh, recycling or whatever. So places where there is some level of segregation and obviously with intervention from volunteers like us, things have been going quite well. I wouldn't say 100%, but things have been quite well. But even in our case, uh, in apartments, uh, not 100% of the apartments or households are segregating. So apartments where there, where there is mixed waste, they do tend to, uh, obviously they will put it in the uh, street bins because street bins are still available for open to residents and also the BOV operators, unfortunately. So they have this system of putting the mixed waste into the street bins. But segregated waste, as far as I understand in few areas, that I've personally visited and seen, they they are not mixing up. If it's if it's clearly segregated waste, that's what my observation is. But uh, what I'm talking about, like Natarajan mentioned in the earlier, uh, uh, you know, during the call, it is very um, less percentage or limited uh, number of people who are doing it, uh, or even the area or community that is doing it. So only that part is taken care. The rest is mixed waste, and it is going to Kodungiur or Palikarani, unfortunately. Yeah, that's that's my point of view with my experience, limited experience. Uh... Yeah, just want to add to that. Um, the uh, Kasturba Nagar, where uh, the likes of Janini are there, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, you know, where there are a lot of uh, volunteers are working. But in other places, uh, that option is not there, right? So uh, even many people are not uh, segregating properly, and uh, in that. Even if, say, there are some 1,000 households and uh, some 20 households are segregating, obviously that's going to get mixed because they look at the majority and they, uh, they will have the mindset of anyway they are mixing, what are you know, uh, this mix it. So there are definitely a lot of uh, gaps and uh, on multiple stages uh, that have to be uh, addressed and uh, we cannot expect volunteers to be available in all the uh, areas. Uh, so the system has to be uh, robust enough and foolproof enough. Again, that's where I'm bringing in the uh, the likes of Arbeza Sumit and the corporation put their onus on them and they should take the responsibility of making sure this happens right. Okay. Um, Madhuvanti, would you also like to add to it? No, I, uh, the point that I wanted to make, uh, Mr. Nadrajan made it, so it's fine. But I had my hand up for something else. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so mm -hmm. You dropped off. Uh, then we lost her connection. Yeah, uh, I think we lost her connection. So uh, it's already five, five. So uh, I would like to thank the panelists for taking time to you know spend with us and answer all these questions. Uh, as of the participants are considered, if you have any more questions or queries related to this, you can always write to us and we'll try to get the answers from the experts as much as we can. We'll also be publishing a summary of this uh, conversation. And uh, yeah. Um, Mr. Hasha, yeah, please go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I, I, I joined a little late, uh, but I just wanted to add one thing. I think I came right in time to listen to the discussion on the sanitary pads and diapers uh, part. Right. So, uh, FOMRA is doing a pilot project uh, starting probably another week's time uh, with a company in uh, uh, Pune, which recycles sanitary pads into plastic and wood pulp. And uh, this is a non incinerator type of solution. They have a proprietary process and all that. So this has been featured on Shark Tank also. So if you uh, Google it and look into that, uh, you'll find details about this. We are piloting this with about 10 RWAs on OMR. 
uh, these 10 RWAs are already doing your two bin, one bag, uh, you know, type of uh, segregation. So they are quite aware of this process and they're doing well in that uh, thing. So we're trying to pilot it there so we get a better understanding of how the logistics work. And uh, once the pilot is a success, uh, I'll, I'll post the result and it, the project will be open to all RWAs all over Chennai, in fact, all over India. Uh, once once we get results and once we tweak the, tweak the system. So just wanted to put it out because all the people in this group I know are very SWM conscious and uh, uh, waiting desperately for solutions for uh, sanitary and uh, uh, diapers. So hang in there, guys. Something hopeful is coming. Thank you. Are you talking about the bad care? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Bad care. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we'll keep a follow up on this. So yeah, as I was mentioning, we'll publish a summary of this conversation in our website. And uh, yes, please do write to us. Have a good evening. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, thank you for joining.